It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Most Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. You know, being a cowboy, you need lots of energy. That's why Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal I like for strength and energy. Just two minutes after you eat a big bowl full, that whole wheat energy starts going to work for you. Try Grape Nuts Flakes buckaroos. They're great. Now, here's our story. It's called the Cash and Carry Rodeo. <laughs> A group of citizens from all over Paradise Valley are meeting tonight in the Mineral City Schoolhouse. The sheriff is presiding, and as Roy Rogers says... Hey, Dale, the sheriff's doing a fine job. Yes, he is. I had no idea he was such a good parliamentarian. Now, what a man, what you're rarian? <laughs> Dale means he's got this meeting roped and tied, Pat. Order, please. The suggestion of a valley-wide rodeo, the entire proceeds and such prize money as the winners care to contribute to go to the lunchroom building fund seems to meet with the approval of this group. Are there any objections? Well, that being the case, I'm going to take a bull by the horns and appoint Mr. DeYoung as chairman of the rodeo committee to work with Roy Rogers, Dale Evans, and yours truly. The meeting's adjourned. I promised my wife I'd be home early. For someone who was sort of against the lunchroom project, you're certainly throwing yourself into this rodeo, Mr. DeYoung. I should say so. And from the looks of things, it'll be the biggest thing Paradise Valley's ever seen. There's no reason I shouldn't do my part in a community project like this. I'm enjoying it. Well, this is a community project, all right. I guess the only outsider who has anything to do with it is Mr. Corbett. Corbett's a crackerjack rodeo man. I figured that hiring him would guarantee that everything would be run properly. And just between us, Corbett's cut his usual fee in half. And I'm paying that out of my own pocket. You and Corbett are doing such a great job that I, I'm just sort of sitting back and figuring out how I can stay on those Bronx long enough to win some prize money. Yeah, I'm just figuring on how to stay on them, period. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you'll do all right, Roy. And and you too, Pat. <laughs> so long. So long. I just don't understand how come he's so generous all of a sudden. After all, he young. He hasn't any children of his own, and I never thought he gave a hoot about the school. Well, I think the idea of having a really big-time rodeo is what's changed him. He was always so enthusiastic about that little private thing that he used to put on, and now I guess he feels he's really stepped up in the fast company. Yeah. yeah. I think he was enthusiastic about his own rodeo because he made himself four or $500 a year on it. How he ever brought himself around to giving that up, I don't know. Howdy. Anybody in here know where I can find this guy Corbett, the rodeo manager? Mr. Corbett's staying at the hotel, but I think you'd find him now out at the fairgrounds. Well, maybe I'll wait for him to come back. Might as well have something to eat while I'm waiting. Well, sure, sure. The menu's right up there on the blackboard, and anything you order is bound to be good because uh, I'm doing the cooking today. Well, that'll be a thrill. Make it ham and eggs, one up and one over. Huh? Sure, I like variety. Say, cowboy, what's the pitch on this big rodeo they're having here Saturday? Well, it's a Paradise Valley community affair. Yeah, yeah, I know all about that. What I mean is, can anyone enter the events? Well, sure, the more the merrier. My name's Roy Rogers, and I'll be glad to take your entries and see that Carbot gets them if you don't have time to wait. Oh, I got plenty of time. I'll hang around town till the show's over. I wouldn't be surprised if I take down a good share of the prize money. <laughs> You're sure welcome to try for it. 
Well, all the cowboys from the valley are going to donate any money they win to our school fund. Well, they don't have to, do they? Well, no, they don't have to, but the purpose of the rodeo is to build a new lunchroom. I don't care where the kids eat or what they eat. I just figure from the size of those cash prizes that after this Saturday, Cop Collins will be eating plenty good for a while. Well, Collins, you look like a mighty good cowpuncher, and that horse you have tied to the rail looks like a mighty useful rodeo animal. But if you're going to enter our show and not enter into the spirit of it, we're sure going to do our best to beat you out on any event you enter. Well, I'm going to enter them all, Rogers, and competition's my meat. How about them? How about them? How about those great nuts? How about those great nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those great nuts? They are so good, good for you too. They do minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about great nuts flakes? Yep. How about those great nuts flakes? Take good old hands advice, partners. Tomorrow, when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy given cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. Grape Nuts Flakes are called the great two minute energy cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowl full, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. You'll go for Grape Nuts Flakes sugar roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. A colorful throng has jammed the Paradise Valley Fairgrounds for the rodeo. Both contestants and spectators are cooperating to make this the big event of the year, for all the proceeds are to go toward building a new school lunchroom. Now before the first event, cowpuncher Cop Collins is under the stands talking to George Corbett, a promoter who has been hired to supervise the show. You don't have to break your neck to win any prize money, Collins. Everything splits three ways, and with the crowd that's up there, everything is quite a lot. Well, that's fine, Corbett, but I'm out to win, just in case something goes wrong. And what can go wrong? I don't know, but this is a big-time rodeo, and you're a small-time guy. It's easy enough for me to walk in and win at the little half-baked shows you usually promote, and it's easy enough for you to stick your fingers in the till when you're dealing with the hicks. These folks aren't that stupid. The only reason I'm not big time is because I never had any luck. The only reason you're not big time is because you're crooked. Oh, look who's calling who a crook. Look, I work for my prize money. Of course, I may not always have the toughest competition. Oh, you think these boys are going to be tough, huh? Yes, and if I find out in the first couple of events that they are, I'll take steps to see that they aren't so tough from then on. Are you sure we can trust this other geezer? Yeah, of course we can. He's as anxious to get his hands on one-third of the money as we are. Ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. welcome to Paradise Valley's biggest and best rodeo. Well, I better get on up there, and you better get over to the chutes. You know when to meet me. Right. You know what I'm here, and so without further ado, we're going to call the first event, Wild Calf Roping. That is fast time. Where'd this Collins fellow come from? I don't know, Miss Evans. Uh, he's a stranger to me. And the next contestant, Pat Grady of the Double R Bar Ranch and the Eureka Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> well, even your waiter entered the events, eh, Miss Evans? He'd have trouble lassoing a cooked hamburger, <laughs> let alone one on the hook. Well, now, Pat might surprise you, Mr. Corbett. And here they come! <laughs> He certainly threw a neat rope on that calf. Tie him up now, Pat. Do it fast. So he handles himself pretty well at that. You bet he does. There, he's finished. <laughs> boy, Pat. That was wonderful. And Pat Brady now leads in the wild calf roping event. His time was 13 seconds left. <laughs> And on the final contestant, Roy Rogers of the Double R Bar Ranch riding Trigger. Say, 
say Roy will have to go some to beat Pat's time, but I guess he will. Uh, you're kind of sweet on this Rogers fellow, aren't you, Miss Evans? And here they come! Come on, Roy! Come on! That's where to follow that calf trigger boy. Now if I can drop the sloop on it. There. Good boy, Trigger. Now hold him there. A little doggy. We'll get this rope around his front leg. Now the back ones. There you are. And the final contestant is the winner of the wild calf roping event, Roy Rogers. In a very good time at 11 and 3 fifths seconds. Good work, Trigger. There's a better rope and horse than you. I have yet to see. The next event, ladies and gentlemen, will be the Wild Steer Wrestling. Hey, good work, Pat. You really tossed that steer in a hurry. Oh, bulldogging is nothing. If I practice, I could probably be the world's champion. Well, maybe you could at that. If you think seven seconds is good time, watch what I do. We'll be watching, Collins, and good luck to you. Well, you ain't so hot so far. You got one third and one nothing. I guess the school fund ain't gonna miss the few bucks you'll take out of this rodeo. And now, coming out of shoot number three, Cop Collins, address unknown. All right, turn the steer loose, man. Grab him, Matt. Hey, Collins is a pretty good cowboy, but I think we kind of got his goat. Maybe so. He's misjudging that steer. Yeah, he's only got him by one horn. There, he's got a grip on him. Hey, that steer's tough. Well, maybe the steer don't want Collins to win. After all, he was bred in Paradise Valley. <laughs> well, he's getting him now. There, he's down. Yeah. Collins through his steer and... Let me see now. Nineteen and three-fifths seconds. And now your winners in the wild steer wrestling are Pat Brady first, Roy Rogers second, and Johnny Estengo third. Why, Pat Brady, you old son of a gun, maybe you could be the world's champion at that. Well, our Paradise Valley boys are certainly coming through, Mr. Corbett. And I thought Collins would give a better account of himself than this. I thought you didn't know him. Oh, I don't. It's uh, just that when he made his entries, he, he talked so big. Well, Miss Evans, I better go down and check the receipts with Mr. DeYoung and the sheriff before the next event's called. I think I'll go down and wish Roy and Pat good luck. They're really giving each other a battle. All right, fine. It's been a pleasure to watch the rodeo with you, Miss Evans. Oh, I'm coming back to the box for the bronc ride. Oh, fine. That's fine. And, of course, you're coming to the basket social we're having for the contestants this evening, aren't you? Well, I, I don't know if I'm much for basket socials. Why, they're all kinds of fun. I don't think you realize what living is until you've lived in Paradise Valley. <laughs> And I'll just be leaving you here. I'll uh, slip over to the box office. I suppose Mr. DeYoung will still be there. See you later, Mr. Corbett. Gee, I'm proud of Roy and Pat. Oh, well, hi there, Mr. Collins. Hello, Miss Evans. Well, you don't look very happy. Oh, what a rodeo. Don't feel badly. One-third in the kind of competition you're meeting today isn't bad at all. You watch this bareback bronc ride, and I'll want to first in that or know the reason why. Boy, is he a poor loser. Looks like he's heading for the box office, too. Well, hi there, Dale. You enjoying the show? Some rodeo, ain't it, Dale? Well, it's certainly a financial success, and you fellows are making it an artistic success, too. You've never been better. Well, we're kind of lucky today, I guess. That Collins fellow sort of got me riled up, and I'm doing my best to beat him. Yeah, me too. You know, I, I never realized I was such a hot shot cowpuncher. Hey, I'm wasting my time in your kitchen. <laughs> I think you're both wonderful, and I came down to wish you both good luck with the Bronx. Well, thanks, Dale. That's sure nice of you. Yeah, it sure is. But I'll bet you hope Roy wins. Well. How long do we have before the next event? Oh, five or six minutes. Why? If you'll excuse me, I want to look up the sheriff. He and I are cooking up something. A surprise? Well, we hope it'll be a surprise. See you soon. Well, I don't know what else they could think of. It's been a perfect rodeo. Say, Pat, have you found out anything more about this cop, Collins? Nope, except <laughs> he ain't quite as good a cowboy as he let on he was. Well, has he mentioned anything about Mr. Corbett? Well, yeah. Right after the bulldog and the vet, he was mumbling something about Corbett giving him a bum steer. But there was nothing bum about that steer at all. Uh, he was just, just plain too tough for Collins. Pat, if you'll excuse me, I, I want to check on something before the event. I just want to be sure that nobody's getting a bum steer around here. 
Skip the bronc riding, Collins. You can't win it anyway. Let's get out of here now. I'm not going to let these guys beat me in everything. I know how I can win. Look, all the money's locked up in this steel box. Let's skip with it the minute the announcer calls the event. We'll skip with it after I ride. I can beat anybody on the grounds except maybe Rogers and Brady. I'm going out right now and fix the surcingles on their Bronx. Oh, I get it. You'll cut almost through them, huh? So they'll snap off when the heat's on. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Wait a minute. Keep talking while I edge over to the door. I think I heard something. Yeah, as I was saying, of all the lousy rodeos I ever competed in, this one takes the cake. <laughs> Oh, keyhole, kidder. Come in here, Miss Evans. Let go of me, Get Corbett. Here I sit. Oh! So you two didn't know each other, huh? Well, I heard everything. You may have heard it, but that's as far as it'll get. Slap a gag in your mouth, Collins. Right. You're pretty nosy, aren't you? Well, what if I am? I'll... That's fine, Collins. Now go about your business. And then get back here fast. I got some plans for the lady that'll really cover our getaway. <laughs> Well, Collins stayed on. Yes, and he gave that Bronx a good ride. He'll score some points on it, too. Up, Collins stayed on his Bronx for the full eight seconds. The judges will announce his point score at the end of the event. Well, I'll climb up on the chutes here, then. I'm next. The pickup men have got him. And they've got the Bronx, too. There you are, Collins. Good ride. Thanks. Thanks for the pickup. It's a good ride, Collins. Best one so far. Probably the best one you'll ever see, Rogers. I'm not going to stay around and watch you and Brady. I don't waste my time on Amazon. And out of shoot number five, Pat Brady on Keecher's Pet. Good luck, Pat. Trigger and I'll pick up for you. Good. Now, don't you get any ideas about throwing me, Bronx. And there they go. And a boy, Pat, you're doing it. Hey, he's off already. Come here, Trigger boy. Hey, Pat, are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right, but what happened? You got thrown. Oh, oh, I landed right on my head. You know, if I hadn't, I might have been hurt bad. Well, come on, Trigger. Let's get that bronc. Pat Brady didn't stick around long, folks, but he's given us a great show up to now. And now the final contestant, and he has his work cut out for him if he's going to beat Cop Collins' ride. Out of shoot number two, Roy Rogers on Grey Twister. Hold the trigger for me, will you, Pat? Oh, sure. Hey, what's that piece of leather you have there? Leather? Well, I'll be darned. You know, I got on that bronc and grabbed my rig and it... Hey, it must have broke. That's why I got thrown. Let me see. It's broken nothing. It's been cut. Hurry up, Roy. The bronc's ready. Okay. Roy, you mean somebody done this on purpose? It looks like it, Pat. And I'm going to check my rigging before I ride. Hey, Roy, look. Broken loose, and Dale's trying to ride him. Pat, she's tied on him. Come on, Trigger Boy. Hey, she's oh, oh, oh. If we've ever pulled off the steer trigger, now's the time to do it. Go on, boy. Yeah. Time for another Roy Rogers reminder. Always do your best. Yep, friends, that's Roy's reminder for today. He'd like you to try to put all the effort you can behind everything you do, at home, in school, or at play. When you do that, everyone will look up to you. To do his best, a man needs strength and energy, which means you have to stay healthy. And to do that, you've got to eat right. Good, nourishing food like Grape Nuts Flakes, the cereal Roy likes best for building up strength and energy. Yes, partners, Roy eats Grape Nuts Flakes for energy. His picture's on every package. Yes, Roy likes those swell-tasting Grape Nuts Flakes because their whole wheat energy starts going to work for you just two minutes after you eat a big, multi-rich bowlful. That's energy you need for most everything you do during the day. And you like sugar-roasted Grape Nuts Flakes. They have a flavor that's multi-rich, makes them mighty good to eat. So if you want to be king of the cowboys in your corral, ask your mom to get you... Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Get for that steer 
turn to see him. Get him. You're not going another inch, you... Hey, Pat, out here, quick. Get Bill out of the way. No, you don't. Hey, I'm here, Roy. Dale and I'll... Hey, she's unconscious. Well, carry her out of here. Do it fast. I'll hold this smoke over her until you're safe. There, she's coming around. Don't seem to be any broken bones or anything. Just a real mean bump. Oh, oh, oh. where am I? Oh, Roy, what happened? You're all right, Dale, but you had a mighty close call. Hey, who done that to you, Dale? Get the sheriff. It was Corbett and Collins. Rogers, Rogers, a terrible thing has happened. A terrible thing almost happened, Mr. DeYoung. But Dale's going to be all right. But we've got to find a sheriff. We've got to organize a posse. In all the confusion, someone ran off with the cash box. Someone ran off with the cash box? Yes, with every cent of the proceeds, over $6,000. It was Corbett and Collins. I overheard them planning it, and they caught me. Don't just stand there, Rogers. we got to do something. Now, easy there, Mr. DeYoung. We've already done it. All right. What, what do you, you mean? Did? Corbett and Collins won't get very far. There's only one road they could start out on for a getaway, and the sheriff has that blocked. What? How did you know what they were up to? We've been checking on this Corbett fella, and we found out he's a pretty slippery character. Well, we just decided to be ready for anything. Well, Roy, that's wonderful, but what if the sheriff slips up? Get in there, Corbett. You too, Colin. There they are, Roy. Great work, Sheriff. They're the ones. They're the ones that tried to kill me. Real smart going, Corbett. You weren't so smart either, Collins. Hey, Sheriff, didn't they give you any trouble? Me and my deputies leaped on them and knocked them off their horses before they knew what was happening. And here's the cash box, too. Give it to me. Give it to me. We'll have to get it to a safe place immediately. You better look inside first, Mr. DeYoung. Huh? They might have taken the money out and hidden it already. Yes, yes. Good idea. Good idea. Well, there's nothing in here but old newspapers and some rusty nails. Harvard and Collins, you dirty double-crossed scoundrels. Where's my time? I thought so, Mr. DeYoung. This was your idea, wasn't it? Well, well, no, well, no, I... The I, reason you were suddenly so public-spirited was because you saw a chance to make yourself a couple of thousand dollars. Arrest him, too, Sheriff. I'll do just that, Roy. Now, look here, dear young... Corbett, now's our chance. Run for it. Take Corbett. your choice, Pat. Grab him fast. I've got Corbett. He's a close. All right, Collins. I was hoping I'd get a crack at you. Fight right. one event. You can't lick me in, Rogers. Oh, no. We'll see. Now, here's the way we handle guys like you in Paradise Valley. Corbett! These handcuffs will take care of you, the young... Give us one, Roy and Pat. Give them all they've got coming. We'll sure try, Dale. Only neither of them will be on their feet long enough for that. Look. Oh, oh. There. We'll let them sleep that off and see if they wake up with any fight in them. Roy, why didn't you let me know what was going on? We couldn't let anyone know we suspected Corbett and Collins until we found out who they were working with. Well, we might have known it'd be DeYoung. He sure did a quick switch from being against the new lunchroom to being all for it. Well, Roy, what do you say we get these fellas down to the jail? Wait a minute. If Corbett and Collins took the money out of the strong box, we've got to find out where they've hidden it. They haven't hidden it anywhere, Dale. The sheriff and I fixed up that box to force DeYoung to tip his hand. The lunchroom fund is safe. We sent it down to the bank when we switched the boxes just before the last event. Oh, I missed the bronc riding. Who won? By golly, we haven't finished it yet. That's right, Pat. I still have to ride yet. And if Collins should happen to win the event, well, I think I can talk him into donating it to the school with a little persuasion. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet Again. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal Roy likes best for strength and energy. Look for the picture of Roy and Trigger on the front of the package. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Remember what Roy Rogers says.
Post Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Roy's right, fellas and gals. As a cereal, it's dandy, with milk or cream. For snacks, it's so handy, or you can eat it like candy right out of the box. Post Sugar Crisp is excitingly new, deliciously different. Nourishing puffed wheat, candy coated with honey and sugar. Ask Mom to get Post Sugar Crisp in the big red, white, and blue box with the three bears on the front tomorrow. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Junius Matthews, Jim Bannon, and Howard McNear. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Great Nuts Flakes. Stay tuned.